All right, so we have two iPads here that were mailed over for rebooting issue. We have an iPad Pro 10.5, and we already disassembled the screen. And we also have an iPad Pro 12.9 first gen that also constantly reboots. We're gonna be working on the 10.5 since I already have it on my bench. The customer only wrote, keeps rebooting, that's it. I think that's enough information to know what's going on. Tablet keeps rebooting. Let's go ahead and do physical inspection on the board. And that's what we always do anytime we are fixing a device. Quick physical inspection. We are looking for possibly burned components, blown components, missing components, cracked components, discolored components. And I also want to check on the coils if they are making a solid connection because I have more than a couple of videos on this channel where we worked on the same issue. And it was either a loose coil or a broken coil or a missing coil. So we want to see if the same holds true for this one. Just go over those coils while doing physical inspection. Looks good. I mean, from experience, anytime I see something like this, it's usually a loose coil, but we'll see. I would say this is good, and this one is not good. This one here is slightly loose. Let's keep it in mind. This one is good. This one is good. And this one is loose. So this and this are actually loose. Oh, look at this. We have a totally missing coil and this tablet has never been opened before. We are the first ones that opened and cracked the seal on that tablet and look at this we have a missing coil we still have the legs of that coil here but the coil itself is missing and the reason is this coil was probably loose like this one and upon impact look at this look at this that's a common problem on this model on the 10.5 model and like i said i've done a couple of videos working on the exact same issue and at one point we had to change like seven inductors. Let's get rid of this one also because it's loose. So we have one, two, three. And the rest, they look solid. Let's continue with physical inspection. <laughs> and look at this. <laughs> the missing coil is right there. You see how the legs are broken off? And they are still stuck on the board. This coil is the one that was missing from here. I mean, how did that coil jump from here to here? That's my question. The screen was still sealed. Check on this one, it looks good. And check on rest of the coils. Okay, and we're all good. I think we only have to replace three coils only three coils and we should be good only three coils on a perfectly sealed tablet i never had to change coils for any motherboard before except for this specific one ipad pro 10.5 i've worked a lot on laptop motherboards desktop motherboards other devices and i never had to change a coil 
unless there was physical damage onto that coal, maybe it's cracked or blown. But for a coal to be loose like that and just come off the board, only Apple. Right now I have a donor board here. Right there, I have a donor board here and hopefully we can extract those components from here. And the phone today did not shut off for one second. For one second. And we have people complaining that we're not answering calls. We do answer calls, but sometimes we have three, four on the line and it's hard to manage all of them. Right now there's nobody here to answer and I am working on this tablet, so I cannot answer. It's a lot easier if customers would just leave a message or send an email, they would get a faster response. So let's see what calls are missing. The second one. And we do not have the second one. But we should be able to extract it from right here. This should be the same size. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and desolder those leftover legs. And we have to be careful because this area is crowded. When we apply hot air, we are liquefying solder in this whole area. So if your hand shakes a bit, you're going to end up knocking off a lot of the nearby components. My wrist is resting on the bench and I'm pulling down and not upwards. That's one. That's two. You see how easy it is? to knock off components, I touched that component and it moved because solder liquefied in this whole area. So the slightest movement can really knock off and make a big mess, a mess that would take hours to fix. And finally, we have this here. We're going to apply flux right here. And we just need a tiny bit of solder. We do not want to put a lot. Because if we did put a lot and we solder that inductor and we press down on it, access solder is going to squeeze out and bridge those components, neighboring components. So just a tiny bit. And that's it. This is our donor board. And let's go back to the customer's board. solid and now we're gonna extract the one on the left let's go to our donor board and see if we have it and of course we do not have it but we do have a similar one right over here Or no, that's not a similar one. That's a similar one, right there. And let's go back to the customer's board. Do not breathe. 
and I should not be talking, but what can I do? I'm used to it. And I just burned two fingers. That's okay. Who needs fingers anyways? Very nice, super solid. And finally, we want this inductor that's all the way down on the bottom. Do we have it? Yes. And pull up. I think we have a little bit more solder than we need. I'm not gonna press down a lot on it so we do not squeeze that solder and bridge nearby components. You see, look at this. Okay, that's good enough. Clean up. And we're gonna give this tablet to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And I'll be back to finish off this video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on. If we have the passcode, we're gonna log in with the passcode and we're gonna set a stopwatch, a timer on Google. And just monitor that timer. If the tablet restarts, then that timer will reset. Okay, so we're gonna go back a bit. We disassembled the board and we have it right here. Big Boss said that when he tested the tablet, the tablet would not take a charge. But the customer wrote that the tablet is rebooting. So maybe when the tablet was rebooting, the battery still had a charge in it. And that's how the customer was able to turn that tablet on and see that the tablet is rebooting. But now we're not able to turn that tablet on and the tablet is not taking a charge. Just like when Big Boss tested that tablet, it would not take a charge. Charging rate on this tablet is 0.6 amps. So I developed a pattern. Anytime I see a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 charge rate, it always turns out to be a short on the motherboard. So right now, if we plug this tablet in, and I need a battery so we can test it. So this tablet has multiple issues, not only a rebooting issue, but an issue, a possible short on the board that's keeping this tablet from taking a charge. I have a brand new battery here. I want to connect the battery connector to the pins on the battery here, just to see what gets hot on the board. Yeah. So right now we changed the battery. I tested with the battery. 1.1 amps, five volts and 1.1 amps. Okay, I'm gonna press and hold on the battery connector and look at this, five volts or 5.2 volts at 1.1 amps. So the problem is the battery in addition to the rebooting issue. And now I'm gonna give the battery to Big Boss to reassemble and reassemble that board and we'll test. I made him remove this whole board because I was almost sure that we had a short on the board. So I'm gonna give him the battery and the board to reassemble and test and I'll be back. Okay, so we have a timer on the tablet and the timer has been running for over 15 minutes and that's why Big Boss sealed it before he left. Let's go ahead and check it out. And the timer has been running for 18 minutes and 50 seconds. The job is done, tablet is fixed and everything is good. We are invoice and mail this back to the customer. We got a lot of packages today and we just got these set of packages at 6 p.m. Right now it's 6.12, time to go home. But I thought, let me go over them before I go home and we'll enter those items in the system tomorrow. So package number one, maybe I'll go over the big boxes first so we can put them on the side. This one here is 
Vivo book. Well packaged. Right here. Customer included the adapter, the charger. Let's go over package number two. And this one is another laptop. Okay, it's a gaming laptop. And very well packaged. And this one looks heavy. It's on an Xbox or PS4 because the box is not too big. This is just items that we ordered. It's not a million. And this one is coming from North Carolina. Oh, right there. It's a GPU. 2080. Let's put it on the side. When will we ever finish all the GPUs that we have here? And this one, GPUs also. Customer mailed over two. Two GPUs. Actually, three GPUs. Big Boss opened up this package, but we did not enter it in the system yet. That's one GPU right here. And which one is this? That's another GPU. And another GPU. This is the GTX 750 Ti. Let's put them on the side. A lot of GPUs, a lot of GPUs. We get at least 15 GPUs a day. And the last time I mentioned that we have about 140 that we need to fix, the number went up. Instead of that number going down, the number went up. <laughs> I just want to show you what's inside that box. Four GPUs. Let's see, what do we have here? We have the 5700 XT, and we have another 5700 XT, and we have another 5700 XT, and we have a 3080 here. We have a big package here, but it doesn't look like it's too heavy. I don't know what's inside. Well, we'll find out. I would not be surprised if this box contains a GPU, but why would somebody send all this box for a GPU, right? It's a video card. I just wish I can find help with fixing video cards. This is the NVIDIA GTX 3090 FE looks like it has an HDMI port issue. Okay, so this should be a fix because I always tell customers it's a 50-50 chance when working with GPUs. We also got this board in. Looks like it has a ticket on it also. And I do not know what's wrong with this board. It's firmware password. And this board is an EFI lock, uh, iMac motherboard. And what else? We have this one. Oh, this one is tagged with a ticket also. It looks like we have an HP Spectre motherboard. The customer mailed over the motherboard only. And this is the HP Spectre, yeah. I've done similar repairs on exactly the same board. And what else do we have? We got three Minimax tuners that we need to fix. One of them is expedited. I was working on this one today, but I'm not done working on it yet. And we have two more here. Those two appear to be from the same customer, two of them. And we have a Mercedes-Benz fob here. And we have two Mercedes-Benz fobs here, expedited also. Customer wants insurance for $150. We always label the bags with insurance if the customer needs it, expedited if the customer requested expedited, and also the ticket. We got an iPad Mini 4, no touch. 
Big Boss put this on my bench. I did not have a chance to look at it yet. And I do not know what's inside this envelope. A picture of a swollen battery and uh, battery cable and connector. What's this all about? I do see some parts here. Connectors. But why? Nothing else was inside that package except for those connectors. And uh, I need to read and see what the customer wrote but not now. And I'm not gonna go over the rest of the packages that we already have put on the shelf there. I do not wanna disturb the organization of that shelf. That's it, a lot of work, a lot of work to do.